Hey, little girl, what are you doing? Look at who we got here. Surprise me, huh? See, you're, you're so good, Annie. Well, hey, we got Dylan's uh, 92 uh, 754 Dually in here. Really nice truck, square body. Probably one of the better ones I've looking ones that I've seen. I really like it. I don't know where he found it at, but he got a killer deal on it. Uh, but the tranny's bad. So um, let me tell you, Trent dropped the pan on this, and I mean it's really bad. So you'll see some some pretty good carnage in this one here. So I don't know if the tranny's been built before. It does have an aftermarket torque converter in it. Now this is a company that we use, uh, BNI out of Oklahoma. Uh, they do really good work. We have really good luck with this company. Uh, the date on this is 8, 8, 15 of something. Can you see that, Teresa? It's kind of a, Maybe like a or something. Yeah, it's hard to say. Now this does have a drain on it where you can drain the converter. I thought it did. Maybe it didn't have the weight I was touching. Or was it? Yeah, it was just a weight. A lot of these do have drains. When you service the tranny, you can pull the drain plug out and drain them. like that. So it smells pretty bad. Now this here does have a lock-up o-ring right here on the stator. Now it is a Teflon ring. It's a split ring. It's not a rubber type uh, o-ring like you see on a 4L60 or, or 4L80 or something like that. So, But it's just hard Teflon. You don't want to leave it off. So get our tail housing off. Now if you're doing a four-wheel drive, you basically change this uh, tail housing to an adapter. And then you change the shaft to a shorty shaft. So pretty simple uh, to do. Almost uh, just like a 4L60 in some of my other videos, you'll see. Now this is a totally computer controlled training. Uh, doesn't have a governor or anything like that on the shaft. Got your speedometer gear here. Got your parking assembly here. Locks it in park. Doesn't engage very much, does it? You'd think it, that'd have that engaging a lot farther than that, but they don't. And I guess it holds pretty good. So, pull this pin out here. And you can pull your lever out. You can look for wear here and on the tip here. You don't see. Uh, very many issues with this thing here. This ring's so hard, uh, you don't see much wear on the tips or anything like that. So, and we have our neutral safety switch. Now, if you get over here and look right here, guys. See if I can get that dirt off there a little bit. You see that mark right there? You put the transmission in neutral, and you then, to adjust this, you'll take and turn, this has got dirt in here, but you'll take and turn this and get that lined up perfectly with that line right there and tighten it down. That's how you adjust it. Put your shifter in neutral. Align that up. There's just so much dirt in here it wouldn't turn. See all the dirt down in there? Oh, yeah. But normally it'll turn a lot like that. See? And like that. So you can just... So. Normally that don't come off that easy. You might have to put some WD-40 or something around there and kind of work it around. If you pull on it really hard, you can damage this, you know, just like your 4L60E stuff. So. Now here you have your uh, connector. You always want to look for any type of fluid down in here. Even though we're going to put a solenoid uh, pack in this thing, you can see it looks a little wet, shiny. Can't really tell. We'll look at the connector too uh, at the vehicle. And, Make sure the wires ain't rotted where the on top of the connector. You see a lot of that on these units too. So
We've got Miss Trace at the camera. Thank you. Again. Trent's pulling a 2005 Dodge. 2003 Dodge out there. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's bad. That looks bad. So this is going to be a good video to watch. <laughs> yeah. Got a lot of nice dirty oil here. See the filter. So say so we're collecting all of our oil now, getting ready for uh, winter for next year. Don't want to say that word right out too loud right now. Cause we can still get snow here, huh, Teresa? Yeah. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna undo all your eight millimeter bolts here on your accumulator body. And you're gonna have a 10 millimeter nut here, a 10 millimeter nut there, one here on the top of the pack, on top of your valve body, and then you're going to have one back over on the corner. Let me almost get you. Let's say we will. I see I got them all there. So we can go ahead and pull these off. All these bolts on the bottom are the same length. Once you get up here, you got longer ones and some shorter ones. I'll leave them there and kind of show you here in a second. Now this here is what you call your accumulator body. Now this is what we call a two-stage. I've talked about this before in other videos, how you have a two-stage system. You have an accumulator valve here, your first stage, and then once this opens up, it lets fluid get into another valve here that has uh, springs down in here. It's a really big piston. Uh, when, when your transgo, you put a transgo kit in there, it'll have you change the springs out for your overdrive, your third gear shift, your intermediate shift, stuff like that. So, but that is a two-stage system there. Now you're going to come over here, you're going to get a really short bolt and a really long bolt. But these this bolt here is shorter than these. So all these bolts on the bottom, take this bolt, you'll have two short ones up here on top with these long ones. So you can't put that one in there. I've never mixed them up, so this you could probably put this one in here and it'd probably grab just a little bit, but it's in the wrong spot. Uh, it really don't even look like it'll grab. Let's see. Let's see if that mistake can be made. Ah, uh, you could grab a little bit of thread there, but will this one go down in there? Never tried it. So, just remember there's two, the two shortest bolts are right through here, and then you have three back up here on the plate back here that are really short. So. Now you're going to get in here, there's two valves here, there's an engagement valve that you'll be wanting to leave a spring out, and it's this one right here. Actually, don't let me lie, I'm going to go make a, I'm going to go look and see to be sure I get mixed up every time I do that. I do so many Chevrolets. Um, you want to make sure these are free though, definitely, but I I'm not for sure which spring to leave out. I'm gonna, have to go grab the book real quick and we'll edit it in the video just to be safe. I get to doing so many. But we do have two check valves here. There'll be one down in here. And then there's one in here. Now these are both the same size. They are a bigger check ball. Can't get it out of there. I'll pull that valve body off real quick. Last Friday of the month? Yeah. Dinner time. 
And there's our other check ball. Like I said, this one here is only going to have two, one here and one here. Uh, the later versions will have some up through here, some smaller ones. You really want to be careful on what you do when you start changing parts on this thing too. You can see there's pieces falling out of that whatever went wrong in there. Now anytime you air check or blow air through this valve body, this plate right here is really easy to blow out. That little plate right there. So when you're over here cleaning and stuff, this thing can blow out. Or you can lose it in your parts wash or anything like that and not even know you dropped it. Now your solenoid pack is held on by Torx bolts. At least it's Friday, it's a good day. You want to get this off and don't damage it or anything because we actually have to send this back as a core. If not, we'll have to pay a hundred dollar core fee or something like that on there. So and that's not something we want to do. But we replace every one of these, no matter how you look at it. A lot of trash goes through there. So we got our valve body plate. Now this is a, you gotta remember this is an early design. Uh, gaskets are real critical on this. The gasket kit you'll get will come with two different sets. You wanna look even look at your white stripe. You can match it up to your white stripe. You wanna look here for three holes instead of two holes in your gaskets. Same way here. You wanna look here at your white stripe. You can identify it by that or you could identify it by the three holes again. Let me get this gasket off here without. Now I don't like to tear my gaskets up when I take it apart if I don't have to. That way, if I need to identify anything at all, I have a gasket to do it with. You always want to be safe. That's why I never knock my bushings out too until I know that I got a bushing just to be safe because nowadays bushing kits can be really messed up. So, you want to get over here, you got your pressure blow off out right here there'll be a check ball on top of it all oh, that metal come in pieces shrapnel right coming out of there in that yeah. corner curious to get down in the bottom here and see what really happened mm -hmm. so but uh, you'll want to use this spring back your shift kit will come with a little uh, puck looking thing that sets on top of there you don't want to lose that spring it's one of a kind it will not come in the shift kit then you got your three hollow bolts here Got your intermediate, your third, forward, overdrive. Now you do have a filter and a spring that stands up right here. I don't know what happens if you leave it out, but I have had them come in the door with them left out. But we always put it back in, it comes in your overhaul kit. Got your engine braking band servo right here. You always want to check this, see how hard the edges are. This thing's really brittle. You can probably break it off. Always put one in there, really cheap. Okay, all the um, check balls in this tranny, you can see them in here, 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 here. Here, there's one here. You come over here, there's one, there's one here, and there's one in the trough. Now some trannies will come where you do not put a ball in this trough. Always look at your gaskets and your spacer plate. It'll tell you. You can see here, you can, or that 
takes a double ball. So you can see here, double ball. So pretty simple. Just pay attention. Go real slow when you do it. Okay, I get to. Uh, This is your uh, ring that seals your filter in. It'll be on your new filter. Always pull it out when you do your service. If not, you can break the neck off when you put your pan on. You double stack that. This valve right here is like a drain back valve. You can see right here, it's a ball and spring. You always want to take that apart and clean it and make sure that spring's not broke and that ball is floating good. If that ball ever gets jammed up in there, you're going to lose lubrication going back to this planet. Just cook it. So we're going to get in here and see what type of damage we got way down in here. Okay, should be able to just kind of grab this, tap on it, and pull it out at the same time. Just like that. Now, we have our pump washer here, and we'll have a pump bearing here. It sets down in here too. It sets flush right here like that. Now these bushings, they uh, that come in your overhaul kit. Some of them will have a, a a circle groove in it like that. See how that comes up and then drops back down. If you look at that bushing right there, it just kind of goes like a, a a spiral down. Don't get them mixed up because they do, they're there for a reason. All these bolts here are the same length. Get my little squeezy. Make that up real quick. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look in here and see what type of lockup system we have. Uh, if it's a non-PWM style, you'll have a, a, a plug here with a hole in it. Now to modify my lockup circuit, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to drill this hole bigger. My Transgo kit is going to tell me what size to drill this hole to. You always want to check your valves, make sure the anodizing looks really good on them. All right, shift kit. We'll also come with a new boost valve assembly that goes in here. Just pay attention, look at your valve here too, make sure it's got good bluing, ain't pitting on the edges and stuff like that. You wanna look here where your pump gears run on both sides. Looks really nice, all that is just like a stain. Nothing there. Just remember your bushings. You know, this one's a spiral down. This has a hoop bushing. So just remember that. You got Teflon sealing rings here. And then you want to look at your pump gear. Now this thing had a lot of metal in it. So we're really going to be looking at the body and stuff like that through here. See all that scarring in there? We'll actually have to put a body in this. This chewed up pretty good, some gears. The stator looks good. We can just come in here and replace this piece here. Get back to having a nice pump.
Now we have our engine brake clutch here. Get this out of here. I don't like using this tool, but sometimes this was does work. But sometimes it'll get you. Like yep. See here. Now the later versions had a pop uh, metal top drum instead of a cast iron drum. It's an early design. Uh, I mean, it's hard to say, really. You want to look at your sun gear. And look on both sides. You want to look at your sprag assembly in here. Totally wiped out. Inner ring gears, inner race is gone. This thing probably uh, started starving for oil, and it started really messing up a lot of stuff. And this thing was uh, driven into the ground. Once this tranny started having issues, uh, they just kept on going. And I mean for months, probably. Now, since it's a gas, you can look here. Uh, it's an aluminum planet. You can see how this planet has, this gear here has turned purple, or turned black. The others are nice still. Mm -hmm. You can see here kind of where the planet is starting to melt. Oh, yeah. See where that's starting to melt mm -hmm. down through here? This gear has gotten really hot. Now, if it's a diesel, uh, it'd be a steel planet here, but being a gas uh, doesn't make enough torque. Even though it's a dually, uh, there's just not enough torque there to break this. So, Can we look at your washer? See what that looks like. Now, you're going to come in here, pull your sprag assembly out. You can see this, the thing starts starving for oil, so we're probably gonna see a lot of stuff bad in here. More than what we wanna see. So. Say your inner race is bad, your sprag is bad, your planet's bad. This hub is still good here. We'll leave it on this side of the table. Now this inner race is, or outer race is bad too. So we know that's gonna have to be replaced. So we're gonna set that aside too. It does have a snap ring your new race might not come with. You might have to use it and put it in your new race. You wanna come in here and look at your ring gear on the inner and outer. You can see there's some metal, it's already some aluminum starting to get bedded in the teeth here. There's some pieces stuck in there. Can you see that, Teresa? Yeah, it's pretty cool. Push that out there on the other side of that. See all that metal in there. But that don't mean this is bad. You just need to get in there and look at the, both sides of the teeth on there, your coast side and your drive side, and see if there's wear. If there's no wear, the ring gear's still gonna be good. So it's just something you need to look at. You're gonna get in here and look at your overdrive stuff. Now, if this was a diesel, it would have three. It would have a thinner uh, plate here. Now, being that it's a dually and I have the parts laying around, uh, we'll put a thinner plate in here and add one more clutch to overdrive. So that's all you have to do to that with everything else. So just fit right in there, just as long as you have the right top hat. So. Oop. Got a problem here for a second. Get me. Tracy already did all the rags, huh, this morning? Mm-hmm. Give me a little break. Give me just a second, people. Let me get some more rags. Got an overflow of a little bit of fluid. These torque converters hold a lot of fluid, so when you dump them over, I got to... I don't know how many drum or how many gallons that drum holds, but it's a lot. Yeah. So, put that 
there. Okay. Let's see if we can get our support out of here and stuff. Now our shift kit will come with a spiral snap ring. Up uh, here, this snap ring is normally not even in the groove. It's just sitting in there floating around. So your shift kit will come with that. And you have your piston. You come in here scotch bright all around here where your new seal is going to run. Same way here, scotch bright that. You can usually get a piece, put it in your hand, and just sit here and run it around this like this. Turn this really nice again. So pretty simple. You're going to get in here and get your snap ring out here. Now this snap ring has a load under it because you have a tool that comes in here and pushes on this piston down and, and puts a load here on this uh, spring washer here. So when you pop this out, it's not going to jump, but you'll see that it's uh, going to move. Yep. <laughs> hey, never had that happen. It's not going to jump, but I guess it is today. But anyway, uh, this sets down in there. This sets on here like this. See here, it pushes your intermediate uh, clutch back. Instead of having springs in your drums, like your 350s, 406s, and stuff, this is your spring to push the clutch off. So, now you do have a, a seal here. You have a seal here. You have two seals in here for this piston here. Same way here, you can come in and scotch bright this all the way around. So this, so this seal will have a nice new place to run. Now, we do see wear sometimes through here. Um, I don't see it, excuse me, it's on the next one. I thought it was on this one, it's on the next one. I get in a hurry sometimes. Let me get this one out and I'll show you. Uh, but what we do is we see we start seeing wear here. You can kind of see this area right here and here coming around and this right through here. You can see it. It's not bad uh, at all. Looks really good. Your, inter uh, your third gear ceiling rings right here for your third gear drum. Your forward ceiling rings go in here. Now you can see here uh, where there's no bushing or bearing and this is such an early style it hasn't been updated to a bearing style yet. What they do is we update this, it won't have a nub here for this bushing down in there. It'll actually have a bearing in here, and this will have a shank on it to center everything now. So that's definitely going to have to be updated. I'll get this down in here. A little bit farther and show you some more stuff too. Now here's your uh, intermediate clutches. I said this thing's probably been into it before. I mean, looks like two different clutches there, two, two different styles, two different brands, mm -hmm. so. And we have our washer that goes on here. You can see there's actually some grease on here still from the last person that built it. You don't see that from the dealer, so this thing's just been into before. Now you're going to look at your intermediate sprag. Hopefully the drum's good, not tore up from all the metal and run low on oil or restricted. You have your washer. Sets in here, keeps this off of it. Look here for any uh, scarring, any chattering. Looks really good. You can scotch bright all that up. Looks really good. Same way here. You want to look at this for any chattering. Scotch bright that up. You can come in here, replace your bushings. You can see, you can just kind of see the ring shadows here. But if you take Scotch bright and just run that around there like that, them shadows will totally go away. Your ring has a new place to set. So real something really simple. You don't realize uh, how much a Scotch bright I use in a transmission uh, when I build them back. I mean, I'm really a Scotch bright fanatic. So. Now we're going to get in here. This is our third gear, third gear clutch. You can see we only have four clutches in here right now. We can physically add one more clutch to this drum. And that will happen. Uh, it's got a high groove here. So basically what we'll do is we'll go with a different plate here. 
go over the different snap ring if we have to to get our clearance right but it's really simple to do so. and then we have our engine brake band these always come out brand new uh, we just don't see any failures uh, anything like that I mean that I don't even know why it's in there <laughs> now you'll see here we have a thrush washer and we have a bearing Now they changed this tranny up a bunch through here, so you gotta be really careful on what you do. Um, now this is a full spline drum. See the spline goes all the way to the end. And if you notice, this has a shank on it where this bearing sets flat. They make a full spline drum that this bearing will not set flat on because they didn't cut it right here right. If you stick that in there, you're gonna bust this bearing. It's an identical drum. You're gonna go, oh, I found me a drum. Let's stick it in. And you don't realize when you put that bearing down there, it rocks. So you want to make sure that you get the right part when you stick it in there. So, um, when we go back uh, with the roller bearing stuff here uh, and the roller bearing stuff in here, uh, we'll even eliminate possibly a washer. I, I'm not for sure. I'd have to do some more research on it again. So I do so many trannies, guys. I uh, it's starting to get a little bigger. Now we do have your forward clutches here. And then you have your, I call like a bevel plate here. Now watch this guys. See that bevel plate I got in my hand? I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna grab my third gear clutches. I'm gonna drop one set. I'm gonna drop two sets. Three sets, four sets. I'm going to use these just as an example. Here's my fifth clutch assembly. I'm going to grab a, this bevel plate since it's thinner, like we talked about, and I'm going to set it down in there, just like that. Look where that's setting at, right up where that snap ring groove is perfect. Now I can come back in here, take my snap ring, put it back in. Now I just added me an extra clutch to that drum really really simple to do as long as you have that bevel plate or when you order your parts just order that order that bevel plate separately real simple uh, that's how you do it um, also you have a bearing on this forward drum that sets down in here you have this three tab washer and this bearing that sets down in here like that uh, you got this forward planet assembly down here that this plastic washer runs on like that and it sets down in your forward clutches you have a washer here now here's your forward planet you can see that the gears are just been hot hot so we're gonna have to have a forward planet too now you want to come in here and look here because uh, this the planet is your bushing. There's no bushing in this ring gear. So you want to look here and make sure it's not wiped out on here. This can scotch bright up, looks really nice. We can put it right on our new planet and be fine. So. And we do have a forward uh, wave plate too uh, on your forward drum. So you'll have your like that, and then you'll put your uh, clutches and stuff on top. Yeah. And we're going to get down in here and look at our sun gear shell and sun gear. You're going to also have another bearing that sets down in the planet. When that sets down on there, it's setting on a bearing. You definitely want to look at your sun gear. If your planet's been hot, you know this sun gear's been hot. You can see here the, the difference in the color where this thing's been. I just you can see the bushing, uh, the groove is almost wore plumb out of the bushing. Almost not even there anymore. So you can see how much more depth. You can see a little bit more of the bushing here. How much of the groove is gone on the bottom one. So, now we're gonna get down in here and look at our lower planetary assembly.
because we know we got carnage coming because we ain't got nothing to nothing yet that what we have been seeing so now Now the same way here, you can see how the, the fluid has just turned brown. This planet actually doesn't look, this pin here looks pretty hot, so, I mean this thing's going to need all the planets put in it. You can see this brush washer here has turned purple, it sets here. So, and we ain't got to the good part yet. This thing has a smell, guys, like you wouldn't believe. And we have our snap ring that holds our lower ring gear onto the output shaft. And you can see this here. And you can see this is a bearing. The earlier designs, even earlier than this, had a thrush washer. So they did a bunch of changes through here at one time. Oh, I see carnage too. So, you know, like that. Let's go down in here and get our low reverse clutches out of here. Teresa says she sees carnage down in here. Got a snap ring out. Now, this piece here is our lower sprag assembly excuse me, lower clutch, roller clutch assembly, uh, and your lower roller, not roller clutch, but your, let's bleep that out, let me start over, but we have our roller clutch assembly down in here, and our low reverse clutch assembly, now here's our reverse clutches, now this will have a wave down in here, Unless somebody's been into it, it doesn't have one. So we'll want to check that and verify that it doesn't take one. Because like I said, the early ones might not and the later ones will. So you want to look at all that type of stuff. And of course we have a wore out clutch there. But you can see here where our Sprague assembly used to be. It's not even here anymore. It's just all going to fall out in pieces. I'm going to pull the output shaft out and get that out of the way and let's see if it's got any damage on it. So, still looks really good here. You can see this bushing I was talking about that I was telling you that kept that centered. Uh, the new kit we got will put a plug here and the bearing uh, will be uh, moved to uh, inside here. So when this sets down in there, this new bearing keeps everything centered. So, don't breathe deep. Okay, I'm going to dump this out really quick. Now here's our sprag rollers. It's totally gone. There's a, a bunch of pieces missing. <laughs> totally. Let me get my 7 16th socket real quick and. We're going to take the lower race assembly out uh, that's cooked too. There we go. Let me pull that out. We got our bolts there. I put holes in both of them. Um, okay, let me get a. Don't run, tree, so I'm just gonna blow this piston out and I won't point it towards you. Point it away. Really quick. There we go. 
Now, when anytime you build this tranny back, you always want to air check this lower piston. Because if you don't, uh, we've had seen issues uh, leaking here. And it's mainly the earlier or later uh, versions that have a, a tapered O-ring. Now this is just going to be a flat edged O-ring here. It don't have a lip seal or anything like that. So you don't see the problem with this version of it. But the later version, you definitely want to air check your piston to make sure so. It's stuck in there really good. Uh, this, actually, that added, I think we're smelling additive. That's why that seal wouldn't come out of there too. So, But you can look here and see um, what the Sprague assembly is, is gone. Let me go see if I got another one over here. waiting my, for my parts to show up today on it so but it um, it looks just like a 4L60E Sprague assembly in the back so it's a big plastic piece uh, that sets down in here when you set this down in here it locks onto here and then you got a Sprague assembly it turns one way and locks the other so this tranny's got some major issues gonna need a lot of repair should have been a core. <laughs> so we got a lot of work to do on this and a lot of cleaning and stuff. So uh, y'all stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe. We got a ton of work going on, guys, let me tell you. So y'all have a great day. Thank you, Teresa.